What's up guys, my name is Brent Barbano. I'm one of the co-founders of ShareGrid. I am here at Canon's beautiful facility in Burbank with Lauren Simons. Thank you for having us. Not a problem. Pretty excited. Uh, we're here to talk about this guy, this awesome camera. This is the Canon C200. I actually haven't even shot on this yet, so I'm really excited today. But more importantly, this is Canon's first time doing a uh, raw light format for a camera on the C200, and we wanted to kind of show you some of the best practices on how to shoot with raw light. But what is raw light? Can you, can you give us a little bit more information? Yeah, so there's, there's definitely a lot of confusion about what is raw light. Is it a raw format? Is it a codec? I've seen people use that word a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is it is a raw format. It is, you know, bare information off a sensor stored in a, in a bare pattern uh, file. It is not a processed video signal. So you have to then go into a computer and actually debayer that to create an image. Right. Um, but you know, that's, that's some of the more techie aspects of raw light and, and raw in general. And one of the things I want to talk about is that today we're going to be talking to sort of two different audiences. We're going to talk to both the professionals who are familiar with raw structures and they want to know about our cinema raw light and how the whole uh, uh, compiled structure works. But then I also want to really emphasize that this camera, while we talk about raw, it is not this giant hurdle that people are used to with RAW. You can shoot from, you know, you can be used to shooting your DSLR in an MOV format and come in and use this Cinema RAW light format and, and feel pretty, pretty much at home in that workflow. So Lauren, what are we going to do next? So right now we're in the, the uh, prep room at Canon Burbank. So we're going to prep the camera, we're going to set up, we're going to choose our lensing and stuff, and we're going to sort of set up a lighting environment where we can see with skin tones, mid tone, uh, you know, middle gray, we're going to see some highlight detail and some shadow detail, and then we're going to go into post. We're going to debayer into yeah. one of the log curves, um, and we're going to see how the different log curves behave differently um, for that image. So really what I want to sort of hit home with this is, is that how should you expose cinema raw light? And we're going to check that out right now. I love it, here we go. I see we've got a Corey here, the uh, wonderful model from all the anamorphic and spherical lens testing that yeah. ShareGrid's done. Um, but then we also have a few other important elements in this environment. We've got a uh, bare bulb right here. It's actually just an LED bulb where we've written in diffusion, cut out diffusion, the word high, so we can actually see as this bulb clips uh, on the image uh, when that high starts to disappear and when we can actually recover that information. We then have a middle gray and a 90% reflectant white here. Uh, this is going to be really important when changing between the log curves and showing you how if you expose right for one one gamma curve or one log curve, uh, you're exposing right for all the gamma curves. And then we also have a little secret message back here um, on this black flag written in black gaff tape, yet another high. So you might be able to see it on this camera, or maybe not, but uh, it's, a, it's black on black to really show the shadow detail and see how the different log curves respond in the shadows. So let's get started. Cool. So we're gonna jump into Cinema Raw Developer right now. Uh, I'm gonna navigate, I already offload this stuff onto uh, our SAN server here. Uh, I'm going to jump into my education footage and down to Share Grid. I've got a couple different folders here. Uh, I'm just gonna do the first one right here, C200. And then one more level down, you click the reel and then all your clips will show up here. Okay. So what we've got here is um, our first clip that I believe we were ready to roll with was uh, this right here, AO1CO2. And you'll see we've got a preview here. We can play this back. The first thing you're going to notice, um, or the first thing you should notice here is your preview settings. So again, this is raw. So how do we want to view this raw footage when it's actually being debayered? And this is where we can change that stuff. So um, we can go from anything from cinema gamut, which is our widest color gamut, which is going to show us the most colors, but of course you'll see that it's now desaturated because we're looking at a really wide color gamut on a very narrow 709 screen here, as, which is what most consumer displays are and what your home you know, laptops are. Um, we could go to something like 2020, which is a little smaller than cinema gamut, but this is sort of the new 709. As 4K is rolling in, 2020 is going to be coming along uh, the lines there too. But for now, for all our intents and purposes, we're, we're looking at 709, so I'm just going to go to the proper color space 709. Then what we have here is gamma. Now, this is really important. What you need to know is that when you're shooting in the C200 and you're shooting in cinema raw light, you'll see that there's that whole custom picture menu um, and you actually can select your gamma, your color matrix, you can add noise reduction or shift your colors around, choose your, um, choose, uh, you know, sort of add green bias or blue bias or anything like that. 
All that stuff doesn't matter in Cinema Raw Light. That does not affect your raw footage. That stuff, basically think of that stuff in that menu as viewing LUTs. You can change your your, can, uh, your uh, C200 to read Canon Log 3 or read wide DR, um, but as long as you're shooting in RAW, that stuff won't affect your RAW, so it's really only going to affect your onboard screen mm -hmm. and whatever is coming out of your pipes. So if you want to set your camera to wide DR, um, you know, Cinema EOS Original, and send that out, that's going to come out of your HDSDI for onset viewing, but that's not going to affect your RAW image here. This RAW image is going to always be just untouched, bare pattern sensor, sensor information. Got so um, here is where we decide and actually choose how we want to debayer that. So we can do something like log three or log two. Um, we can go to something like a, a YDR, which is sort of a more 709 style gamma yeah. curve, but with a nice slow highlight roll off. Yep. But what I really want to show you is uh, we're actually going to pop out of this on-screen uh, demo and I'm going to send this image out to my SDI display. So one of the things I want to show you is you know, why should I go to CAN log two? Why should I go to CAN log three? When should I be making those decisions? And for the most part, in this software, I tend to send everything out CAN log two. And here's why. CAN log two is the most aggressive curve in, in, in the whole Canon gamut. Yeah. It, it really shows the most highlight detail, the most shadow detail. It is very aggressive. So mm -hmm. it's the, the best starting point because it shows you the most information. So I'm gonna show that right now here. Where first, let's look at CAN log two. We can see both in the highlights here, I've hidden the words high, like we showed in the little yep. behind the scenes earlier, um, high in uh, diffusion, basically. We taped it onto there. And you can even see a high in the shadow region on the uh, right. flag itself. Right. Now, what we can also see in the shadows are a lot more noise. Lots of noise. Lots of noise yeah. um, because we're digging deeper into the luminance values. Basically, imagine like we can see deeper into the shadows in log two than we can in log three, but in that detail will come noise, sensor yep. noise, sensor artifacts. Yep. So if I were to say, you know what, I'm actually going to go to log three. Boom. It's cleaned up. We've lost most of the detail in that shadow region. Yep. Um, the high is still there it's for the very most hard part. To see, though, on it, both shadows and highlights. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is. It is stretching it a bit more. Yep. The highlights um, are pretty close traditionally. When you go from log three to log two, they're pretty close. The only difference is log two encodes its 6.3 stops above middle gray at um, uh, roughly 92.5 percent IRE, okay. or 92.5 uh, percent. Whereas um, Canon log three sends it all the way to the top. So it, it, your highlight information will be very similar on both CAN log three and CAN log two. However, in CAN log three, it will just appear visually brighter because it's being mapped to a higher level. Got it. Um, but that's still, that protection is still there. Um, but really what you're seeing is a, is, a, is a distinct lack of shadow detail, but also a distinct lack of shadow noise. Yep. So it's dramatically cleaning up because it's saying, hey, things that are darker than this percentage of exposure, I don't care about it. For shooting on log two, yep. You get all this, you get all this detail, but you get all this noise. Correct. Noise scares people. Noise scares me. Yeah. As a filmmaker, I see noise in, sh in, sh in the shadows, and I'm sometimes I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. What do you do? How do you handle the noise as, as a filmmaker? Maybe you don't have the setup, and you're back in, in your own home, and you're trying to color a project you just shot. How do you handle that noise? So there, there are a couple different options. I mean, yeah. the, the way I look at log two is that. It's designed for people with larger infrastructure where right. it's like, I'm going to be looking at a reference display, I'm going to be doing power windows, but that's not to say that only those people should use it. In my opinion, everyone should, if you're going to debayer in Cinema Raw Developer, you should go to Log 2. And I'll show you why when we get into DaVinci, because if you start with Log 2, you can, de you can basically, because it's the most aggressive curve we have, you can make Log 2 look like Log 3 or look like Log 1. You can, right. or the original log. You can, as long as you start with log two, you can make it look like anything, anything you want. And you can always throw away that information later. So I'm of the mindset, start with the most information you possible. It's gonna look the scariest because it's gonna have the most noise. But once you start massaging it, or once you say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna make this whole project log three. You can do that in DaVinci versus having to go back to your your, canum, uh, your, your, your Cinema Raw developer and then re-debayering in log two if you originally debayered in log three. So now we're in DaVinci Resolve, and we're gonna jump into the C200. Uh, first, the first card we shot, and then you can see immediately I've got footage here that we can wow. hit the space bar on. As opposed to, I'll just bring up Finder real quick. You know, you, you can't you, you can't, can't preview this. This is just right. straight CRM. So DaVinci will read your raw light 
It's Strand. Gorgeous. It's great. And so as of DaVinci 14.1, our raw light, um, there aren't the extensive options like there is in Cinema Raw development. So you might say, well, what, what image is this? I mean, it's a raw image, so what am I actually looking at? And um, as of 14.1, they're de they debayering um, into Canalog 2 Cinema Gamut. Conveniently the same you know, uh, spec I was saying is pretty much the best of everything, start with that. Right. So um, I just simply dragged one of our clips into DaVinci Resolve here, into the, uh, the media pool. Gonna jump into edit, drag that into and create a timeline. And uh, we're on our same clip that we were talking about earlier, this uh, this high, the, the hidden high clips. We'll yes. Call it. Um, so what I first wanna do is say, hey, here's here's log three, or, I'm sorry, uh, can log two. The first thing I wanna point out is um, we're gonna look over here at this screen, is that magically, looking at a waveform, my middle gray is exposed properly at 39%. Yep. However, I wasn't able to see that on when we were shooting because we were shooting, there is no can log two in the C200. There is no way to view can log two in the C200. We were viewing can log three. We were just using basically the can log three LUT. So we were viewing can log three and we put that middle gray in can log three's appropriate position, which 33? was 33%. Got it. So we exposed can log three properly and then magically, Canalog 2 is exposed properly. Right. So what I'm going to do right now is say, you know what? Again, this is Canalog 2. This is showing me a huge amount of information. I'm, I'm getting, you know, artifacts in the shadow areas. Um, but hey, I can see that high crystal clear. Yep. So now what I want to do is say, you know what? I want to make this log 3. So I don't have to go into Cinema Raw Development and, you know, re-export the or export stuff as, as log 3. What I can do is simply use LUTs that Canon provides themselves on our website just jump into the gamma and I'm basically just going to go to, I said, I said, Hey, I shot can log two and I'm selecting this option here. Can log two to can log three. And now magically middle gray is at 33%. And this is the image we saw by eye while shooting on, on the camera, on the camera. This is, this is yeah. can log three. That's so crazy. it's really like, what's really cool about cinema raw light is how it's being accepted into the, into the different NLEs. And yes, it's a raw format, but it's being treated almost like a video codec. It's yeah. it's really, really simple, but with all the power of a raw format. I love it. I it's love super, it. super cool. I'm yeah. excited. I can't oh, wait yeah. to start start shooting on yeah, it. Yeah, you'll you'll love it. You'll love it. So I know a lot more about raw light than I ever thought I would. That was pretty awesome. Uh, this camera is incredible, man. Uh, what else do we need to know about it besides raw light? Because it's got a lot of other cool things. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things about it. Uh, I mean, if you haven't experienced dual pixel autofocus before, that's mind blowing. It's key. Like that's that awesome. is super key. There's a touch screen uh, for it now, so you can tap something. It'll keep that in focus. You can move in and out. Um, you can track an object. So you could say if you're shooting like a slider shot, you can right. set it up on a slider. Say track that lens, and then as you move in and out, you worry about the slider from smoothness and the panning, and it will keep it sharp. It's super cool. Some other things people are interested in is the fact that um, the video outputs. So you can actually do a. Um, some of the concerns are um, uh, when you're not shooting cinema raw lights and you're going to the MP4 cards. They're 8 bit. It's 420. What do I do? Um, depending on your level of work, and if you require 10 bit, the output terminals um, when they're outputting 2K or, or HD or 10 bit. So I actually had a client say, hey, I want to shoot 2K, 10 bits. You know, I don't want to do cinema raw light. It's too much data. I don't need 4K, um, but I want 2K, 10 bit. And we actually figured out that if you set the camera to rec record, so it'll basically trigger, it'll send out a record flag, set it to rec record, put it in cinema raw light, which is 4096, so it's 4K, it'll actually send a 2K signal out of the HDSDI into something like a Convergence Design Odyssey. And when you hit the record button, it will send the record signal to the Odyssey and record 2K 10 bits up to 60P on the Odyssey. That's and great. you don't need to have, you don't need to buy a CFast card, you don't need to buy an SD card, you can just hit the record button, empty slots and it'll start the uh, Odyssey recording and it's wow. ProRes 422HQ right there in the Odyssey. That's pretty yeah, awesome. Super, super cool. There's, there's so much cool stuff about it that you just kind of got to play around with. Right. right. I mean, and you're shooting this footage that we shot today. I mean, it's yeah. incredible what it can, what it can do. Um, you got to pick one of these up and if you can't, you can run them on ShareGrid too. We've got quite a few on ShareGrid, but uh, it's a definitely an, an awesome investment. I think this camera is going to be around for, for quite some time. I think so. I think so. it's really future-proof itself. I mean, everything from audio to video, to it's it's really an impressive camera. Awesome. Well, dude, thank you for having us. Yeah, man, it was a pleasure. Thanks Appreciate for being it. here.